Hope you've had the right size. Alright boys, uh, welcome to another episode of the Barra GQ Patrol. Uh, last time you saw it, it had no front. Uh, got the car on the hoist and uh, did a little bit of trimming of the grill off camera. It still needs a little bit just to get it to fit 100% but uh, it, it looks real good. So that'll get painted black, uh, hidden out of the way, out of sight, out of mind and today we're putting in this Brown Davis long range tank. I've just been looking through the list. The one thing I don't have because this car had a gas tank in the back and someone had decided that they were gonna put like a sub tank in underneath here. They cut all the lines and put all the uh, absolute garbage water and air hose, but what do you do? So the only thing I'm missing is the 5 8 feed hose. The feed hose that comes off the back of the filler neck just so that air can get back into the tank while it fills i think they call it a fast fill or something like that comes with the kit sorry um a 32 b 40 reducer because the original filler neck's 32 and then the inlet on the tank's 40 so they give you a 32 b 40 reducer 40 mil fuel hose for the uh, connection goes in there and then that end goes on there uh, 5 8 by 3 8 BSB elbow. Hmm. So the uh, quarter inch by quarter inch barb that goes to our expansion chamber slash carbon canister. Now the biggest, the biggest issue, well it's not really an issue, but the biggest thing we're going to do is retain the original TB42 sender unit. Uh, this had a faulty sender before, it wasn't reading, so I've just gone through, given it a scrub, contact cleaned it, and then checked the resistance through it. Now it works, as it should. Uh, we have got a dash 6 feed, and like a dash 4 return, I'm assuming because it was such low pressure it was carby fed, didn't really need a big one. But now we're going to dash, well dash 8, with a 460 pump, we're gonna need a dash six return because we've got a dash six feed. We'll give it a dash six return. Gonna drill that out. Yes, yes, you can use a TB45 uh, complete sender unit, but hey, if this is what we got, I might as well try alter it and make it work. And then for our electrical connections, we've got these bulkhead fittings here. Gonna drill two holes in the top of the hat, bang, bang, and then just wire straight to them. We'll have a Dash 6 return, as well as a Dash 6 feed, that will solve all our issues. Alrighty, just quickly, uh, these bulkhead fittings, they're just a 6mm stud with, I'll unscrew it, with two, uh, what would you call them, plastic flanges per se, with two O-rings in them. You'll see, if you can get close enough, there's a little lip with the O-ring. Sorry about my dirty finger. Uh, but they call for they call for an 8.1 mil hole. What I've done is I've gone through with an 8 mil and then put a small chamfer on it with a 13 mil just to give it that tapered look. So then when we put our hole in there, it sits in there nicely. All right, boys, got those uh, posts fitted. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set the multimeter. I've just got an amp clamp here. It's a multimeter and an amp clamp. Uh, I'm going to do a continuity test. Basically what it is, it tests circuits, touch the two prongs together, completes a circuit, it then does an audio, audio beep. Audible? Probably an audible beep, that's probably more. Gonna test between the hat and the post, or the sender unit. Touching that there, 
so you know audible sound. Whereas if I go over to here, there you go. It completes a circuit. So we'll test the two. This way we know that our all thread or our post between it isn't making contact with uh, the hat and then causing either fuse popping or uh, explosions. So we'll test them again. Life's good. That's the go. That is the go right there. Beautiful. Flow on a return. Alrighty, quick uh, braise of the return. I forgot to put the flare on the return, so I'm going to have to try Jimmy a. Uh, flaring block in there, but we'll get it. Alrighty, so I've set that mark there. I'm gonna sit the 460 up, probably five mil, just so it doesn't get itself stuck on the bottom of the tank. I'm going to cut it on that black mark there, and we're gonna put a little bit of tube in there. I'll also get the MIG out, put a couple of tacks just there, so the hose clamp clamps above it, and then the pressure from the pump won't push it off of the pickup. A little similar to that there, but instead of having a uh, die to do it, we'll just do it there. All right, boys, there she is. 460 pump, couple of bulkhead fittings. I'm just gonna go ahead and call that Dash 8 return. It's just a smidge under it, but yeah, Dash 8. Uh, there it is, done. Oh, and that's submersible fuel on too, rated to 250 PSI. So uh, it won't go all gooey and E85 rated. Um, I'll put a little kick. I put a little kick just on that return there, so the returning fuel doesn't shoot directly at the intake of the pump. I'm just, I don't think it'll do anything, but there's a chance of cavitation on low fuel, I guess, maybe, kinda. So I thought if I just throw a little kick on it there, it'll stop that. But uh, now that can go in the tank. does say flush tank out with vehicles fuel before fitting you might want to do that gonna start bending up some uh, some fuel line got the half inch or dash 8 uh, these here set of Rothenberger half inch plumbing benders now what we're gonna do I've gone and ripped out all the old fuel line 
gonna try sneak up above the hat, back down, and then shoot across, shoot across here, where someone's decided they're gonna drill some holes. I don't know if they're factory, they don't look very factory, but I'm gonna shoot across the top there, and then come back down in front of that suspension. Coil, oh, down across the rail. Uh, not too sure what I'm gonna do here, but we'll figure that out. Uh, we can relocate that bracket run across the inside of that rail and then up to the fuel rail that way i can delete everything here apart from them two lines there um really i probably should have just picked it up from the underside where it, where it come up here and then gone across but i didn't want to come underneath the engine uh, or the bell housing so uh a lot of work to make things look pretty but i guess that's the difference and there's our two fuel lines up in there. Alrighty, so, I don't know what happened then, but the old GoPro had a bit of a uh, brain fart. Uh, this here is our flow. So what I'm gonna do, like I said before, I think I'm gonna put the fuel filter in there, right where it rolls up and over. There's gonna be plenty of clearance to the diff. Um, so what I'm gonna do is get a measurement from the top of the hat, to roughly center of the actual uh, car, and then that's where we'll put our fuel filter. So I'll cut that up now and get a spot for it. So, I've got the uh, filter in there. I relocated it, I did have it further across, and then something come to my mind. Like, hold on a minute, there needs to be an exhaust come through here. So, a lot of progress hasn't been made because I've been looking underneath the GU, trying to figure out where the exhaust is, and then I'm gonna have enough clearance to the actual filter itself. Look, later on that might actually get moved down further to the rail. One, for ease of access, uh, and two, I'm a bit uh, pedantic with that sort of stuff. So I've been looking, three and a half inch exhaust comes over here and then it goes 90 back between the tank and the shock. So as long as I've got enough clearance there, I might put a heat shield in there, it'll be fine. But also too, like, you need to have it easily accessible. Uh, whenever you need it, which, look, directly over the top of the pinion uh, isn't that bad. So I'm just going to go quickly run the uh, other Dash 8 down through the rail up towards the front of the car, and I'll come back to you once that's done. Boys, the excitement's real. I just got something in the mail. Boom. It's gonna, uh, it's gonna take up fabricating, uh, take up the notch a little bit. So. Whoa! <laughs> 